you maybe you haven't experienced these issues, you will eventually run into this. And this is a fact. And there's a few ways to deal with it. And so listen up, because this, this will potentially save you a lot of trouble. Hey, what's up everyone? John Stayskull here. Welcome back to another game dev tutorial. So today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, script separation. And that's the idea of having, say, a player controller, but instead of having one big massive file that blows out, breaking it up into logic groups. That is to say input, movement, collision, animation, things like that, and having them all talking to each other through this centralized player script. So we're going to look at how to set that up and all the things you need to know. All right, let's get into it. Hello guys, welcome back to another game dev video. So today we're going to be looking at an interesting topic, script separation, and how it applies to your player controller. Because this is where more often than not you will want to or consider separating your scripts. Because player controllers can get quite bulky with a lot of different logic categories, um, collision, movement, input, all going off at once. And quite often that um, player controller file can grow very big. So you may want to kind of break it up into different sections, but it's not always so easy and we'll get into why. So in this sample scene here, you'll see I have a player and on that player, I have a player script. So I'll just run that first to show you guys um, what it's doing. So the player can move left, right, and when he touches the spikes, he gets all sad. Cool. Okay. So let's look at that code now. So it's all taking place in one um, script file. So it's a very typical situation here. Um, nothing too unusual. So we have the top, we got a bunch of properties, um, a start function where we map the animator and the rigid body component, a little mini state machine, uh, an update function where we check for the input for the left and right, which we then store as a um, bunch of properties and move the player in the fixed update for a bunch of um, functions here. And at the bottom here, we have some collision code, which checks for the um, spikes. So we have collision, one section, movement, another, and input up here. So three different kind of code categories. And for a little mini script like this, it's not a problem because the game isn't doing much. But if you run into, if you make a really big 2D player game, like currently Blood and Mead, my game, the, the player script is, or was massive, was just huge, just thousands of lines of, of different intricate um, logic, pretty primarily of these three kind of categories. Um, and this topic came up on my Discord, I think it was Crumb 5, Crumb 8, um, but we had an interesting game dev discussion um, about this. So shout out to you, man. Um, hopefully this will be insightful. So let me show you guys a little diagram I set up that'll put in perspective. So here we have the player script, the main one, which we just have. So we wanna break out that sub logic into three extra components, an input script component, a movement script, and a collision script. And we want them all to be linked to the player script. And um, essentially what we wanna do is we want then these scripts to um, communicate through that player script. So if the movement script wants to check the input, it doesn't do it directly. They don't communicate like this. Rather, they have to go through the player script and access the other controller. So this is a nice way of just keeping the flow kind of um, clean and having just this centralized location where we can um, pass all our stuff through. Because you, you can imagine if this talks with this, this talks with this, this with this, yes, it'll work, but um, it could cause just a lot of spaghetti, as it's called in programming, spaghetti code. So jumping back into our script file, let's now remove all this code here, and we're gonna dump it in separate files based on these um, categories. So we don't need the fixed update. We don't need the input. We don't even need the update. Um, we'll leave the state manager. So I'm now going to attach the um, additional script files, which I've just created earlier for convenience. So we'll go um, input, player input script, 
player movement script and a player collision script. So before we can do anything with those, I want to create references to these in the main player script. So I'll just go in there and I've just got in my clipboard a copy and paste. So here I'm just creating three serialized um, references to those three scripts I just added. The input script, the the play, yeah, sorry, the movement script and the collision script. So now if we jump back over here, we can now drag these scripts to those um, serialized fields. So this is really cool, it's quite powerful. Input, movement, and collision. So now, let's actually go into these scripts to show you what's in there. This is the input script. What have I got here? I've got a, I've got a, importantly, I've got a reference to that main player script because as I mentioned, we're gonna to wanna to go up if we wanna communicate with the manager, with the other um, script files, the collision manager or um, movement manager, we'll wanna go through the player script. So we need to reference to the player script. We also might want to reference some of those properties um, on the player script, like the health, the walk speed, the rigid body or the animator. We might need to reference those. There's no particular reason at the moment, but so each of those files has a reference to the player script. It's like the parent, right? And those script files are the children. So they, they want to know who the parent is. So if they want to ask to eat or they want to ask to watch some TV, they've got to go through the parent. So I'll just assign the player script into each of these now. So I'm just reversing that drag order, dragging the player into those. Cool. Um, so I'll just open that movement script. So in the movement script, I've um, just got a bunch of movement code and nothing else, you see? It's very clean, it's just handling the movement. It doesn't want to know about collision, it doesn't want to know about input. Well, it wants to know what's happening with input, but it wasn't, doesn't want to manage it itself. So you can see here, this script um, to move left or right is checking the input manager. So it's going through the player script and it's accessing this input manager. So we're now in the player script, you see? We're now accessing this um, input manager and we're checking the state of um, is left pressed or is right pressed. And the movement controller is then firing off some functions based on that. And um, we'll just check what's in the collision manager. So here I've just separated out that condition logic, you see. So um, if the player runs into a object with a does damage tag, it tells the main play script to change its state to sad or happy, depending on if it's colliding or not. So we'll just hold control and press click to go to that function to see that. So we're now in the player script. So you can see there's this perfect communication between um, these three modules where the, where the input gets essentially kind of dispatched in a, in a way um, where the movement script can pick it up. The collision script is then communicating with the player script to tell it to do change states and stuff like that. So that's very cool, but does it work, right? <laughs> so let's run it now and, and find out. All right, so that's working exactly as it uh, was. So there is one critical thing I want to point out here, and it's very, very relevant, and it's gonna potentially snag people who try to go into this code separation situation without understanding. So all these um, scripts here have a start function, as you're aware, and start gets fired when levels start or games start. So you can see here, in each start function, I've just put a console log that it's starting up, okay? And yeah, right, and the player has one too. So look what happens now when we run this. Check this out. Look at the log. The player controller is firing first. The player movement controller is firing next. 
the play input third and the actual main player script, which should be firing first, is firing last. When I say should, I mean theoretically we, we want it to fire first because um, the play script is the main one and it needs to be established first. So that's a problem, right? Um, tr try to keep up with this. I know it might be a little bit much to um, um, understand right now because you maybe you haven't experienced these issues, but you will eventually run into this and this is a fact and there's a few ways to deal with it. But um, so listen up because this, this will potentially save you a lot of trouble. Just on another topic, guys, I just released a Unity asset called the Ultimate 2D Car Game Kit. Um, it's just a massive pack that lets you get into making car games really quickly without getting bogged down for hundreds of hours with all the initial setup process. Yeah, I mean, you still need to do plenty of your own code. It's not a, like a complete game. It's, a, it's completely functional, but you know, you still have to turn it into some cool game project, you know, whether it be a car RPG or a Formula One racing game and, and all that. So it's just a really good starting point for anyone who is interested in getting into car games. And um, it'll be useful for you and it'll support me. So this movement script, right? It needs to know about the rigid body component on that main player script. So this is also something else of, of relevance. The main player script is holding a rigid body component. This movement script is referencing that rigid body through that player. I mean, I could define another rigid body up here, which is basically just another reference, but um, it's kind of redundant. There's, there's a um, acronym in programming, DRY, don't repeat yourself. Now, th this is not a really violation of that per se, because quite often you might need to um, establish the same um, component reference twice, whether it be the animator component or the rigid body or, or, or something of, of that kind of nature. Uh, but in this case, I've opted to try to be a bit clean and go through the player script and access that one. So there's only one rigid body reference um, and all those other subscripts have to access that. Here we are checking for the rigid body 2D. But by the time we press left or right, all the scripts have um, established themselves and they've all started up, so there's no problem. But say in the start function, I tried to reference the um, rigid body on the main script. What do you think is going to happen? So what if I said rigid body 2D dot velocity equals vector 2, 0, 0. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, it works over here, right? So it should work here, yeah? But because this script is starting up before that main player script, this rigid body reference is going to be dead. It's not going to. It's not going to exist yet. So now, when we run this, we should get an error. Boom! Look at that. The movement script started up. It tried to look for the rigid body and it says, "Nope, this thing does not. This thing you're looking for does not exist yet." And you can see um, later on the play script starts, right? So this execution order is critical. And it's funny because some people um, they see this move up, move down uh, functionality in the inspector. And they think that maybe this determines the script execution order. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be something maybe Unity should consider. Um, but this is more just for visual organization. If you want to solve that problem of execution, you can do it in two ways. We're just jumping over to the player. You guys might be aware of this function called awake. So awake gets fired before the start, before any start. So if you had 10 different components, they all had a start function, no matter what order they get, get fired in, um, this awake function on this particular script will always fire beforehand. So we can just test it out, right? Main script or player script awake. And the idea is that we move these um, definitions outside of start and put them into the awake function and that should theoretically fix our problem so we'll just test that out let's clear the console press run and you can see here no errors and it works again you see so that was one solution we um, moved these very important 
declarations that the other scripts need access to into the awake function. So that's one solution. What is the other? So I'll just move these back into the start function just to get that error back. Let's run that quickly just to see we got the error. Yes, got that error again. Right, so script execution order. This is an interesting one. So we'll go to file, or rather edit, project settings, and down here, hidden away nicely, is this tab called script execution order. So you press this little plus button here, and you can find all the scripts in your project. And here we've only got four custom scripts. Um, so we'll put the player script, I'll just put them all just to make it a bit easier to understand um, collision script and movement script. So as I showed you in the console window here, um, when the Unity starts, whatever, whatever scripts are attached to the object, it fires them arbitrarily, like it, it comes up with some random order, which is not particularly useful because um, it doesn't know. It doesn't know what you deem more important than something else. So here, these times here are the, the milliseconds that have passed since you press start. Okay, so here you can, if we set, well, the idea is to set all those other scripts higher to a higher number than the player script. So we've got the player script starting at 100 milliseconds, the input script starting at 200, collision at 300, and player movement at 400. Um, and you can use any any numbers here as long as um, they are higher than that player script we are good so I'll just hit apply on that let's run this now so in the console window we should see the player script starting first look at that player script collision script input script movement script player script, collision script, input script, movement script. So they are the exact, we've, we've told it what order it should start up in, which is another way to solve our problem without having to move the code um, into the awake function. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's just run that and make sure everything is cool. So that's it, guys. Um, that's how you can manage code separation on your um, game objects. And it's not a bad thing to do because um, if something goes wrong in one file, the error will show here on, on what file it's in. I can go to that file directly. I can fix the problem. So it's just a nice way to organize your code and um, it's a bit more manageable. All right, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below and make sure you sub if you haven't already. And thanks to my Patreon supporters who have been generously donating to me every month. You guys are absolutely fantastic. If any of you guys want to support this channel, I'll put a Patreon link down below. Doing so will give you access to all different um, player scripts and project files from all the previous tutorials, AI files, and interesting kind of little bits and ends that you can use in your own projects. All right, guys, all the best. See you in the next video and wishing you all the best on your game dev adventures.